Hey, 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 real fam, all my creators and entrepreneurs. I'm back for another episode of Real Talk Business and Motivation. If you guys have been tuning and tapped into what's going on around us this week, Monday was Mental Health Awareness Day. So today's episode, I will just be sharing light on wellness and business space and also just facing mental health struggles while operating in greatness. So without further ado, the special guest for Wellness Wednesday episode is going to be Candice Webb. She's an entrepreneur, motivational speaker, a poet, a writer, and just a just a jack of all trades, I would like to say. She wears many hats, so that takes a lot of balance. We have a lot of things in common when it comes to going to therapy, starting businesses, and just, just being more self-aware on our entrepreneur and healing journey. So I would like to bring Candice on the screen for she can tell you a little bit more about herself and her journey. Hello, Candice. How are you? I am well. How are you? I'm doing great. How you feeling tonight, though? How you feeling? We're going to keep it real on this show. I'm just let you know it's called, called Real Talk Business and Motivation, so don't hold back. <laughs> First of all, thank you for having me. Um, I'm glad to be here, and I'm doing great. It's It's been a good day. It's been a good week so far, so I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So I know I mentioned that you are an entrepreneur. Yes. Um, you're a writer, mm-hmm. a poet. A motivational speaker. Am I leaving anything out? Um, I also have a full time job. Um, I have okay. two daughters, one in college and a freshman in high school. So, they look great. But thank you. You know <laughs> what they say. But yeah, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, my hands are are full, but you know it's rewarding. I do my work is really re- rewarding. Awesome. Um. Just by you being a mom and also wearing those, all those hats, I would like to say that that takes a certain type of balance. And especially when it comes to mental health and staying grounded while operating so many projects at once. So I know that you're really big in wellness. So can you tell me a little bit about that? So uh, my wellness journey is, uh, I believe, this segment because I work in the wellness space, but I've also been on an intentional wellness journey of my own. Mm -hmm. Um, I work for a luxury wellness and travel company. We plan luxury retreats for women of color all around the world. Um, The CEO of the company is currently in Brazil (laughs) with about a dozen or more um, women of color, and they are on their healing journey as well. Our retreats are really intentional. So I work in that space. I also host an international podcast where we focus on wellness. Um, My small business was created um, as like a tribute to my late grandmother. And I make candles and room sprays and just things that make you feel good and things that smell good. Mm -hmm. And most of them have lavender in it. My podcast is called The Lavender Woman. And lavender, um, purple was my grandmother's favorite color, as well as she had um, dementia and Alzheimer's, and that ribbon was purple. So everything just kind of came together, and it made sense cohesively. So I just have my hands in the wellness space and in so many different places. Um, First of all, I want to say that that's awesome, but I am sorry to hear about your grandmother. I can relate to that because the reason behind starting my business, uh, first business, Costly Virtual Support, was because I wanted to continue on my father and brother's legacy that also passed away. So I'm like, ah, I got to I gotta build this costly name. So that is the reason why I started my business, too. And that gives you like a certain type of motivation, I feel like, when you're, when you're doing it for those that have passed. It's like they're... It's like they're passing you the torch and now you feel like, okay, let, let me make something out of this. For sure. My grandmother was the person that people kind of went to when they needed advice or when they needed a shoulder to lean on. And I was like, when she was gone, it was like, who fills that void for people, you know, especially my family. And it was like, who, who, uh, who else but me? Like, I can do it. You know, I grew up under her. I saw everything that she did, how she was so intentional about helping people. And so I decided to just pick up where she left off and I haven't looked back. I love it. Um, and it's crazy. It's crazy how the people that 
that we lost could really set the tone. I want to say that my father was an entrepreneur. He was also he was also a businessman. I've seen him work his way up, starting off as a bellhop, then being like the district uh, manager for a hotel chain. So we did a lot of traveling and living in hotels. But he also was a DJ, a radio host. He had his own businesses. So as a child growing up, I kind of always admired that and like, I want to be the boss, too, when I grow up. If I'm not the boss of a company, I'm going to be my own boss. So I'm going to do both. <laughs> they're still inspiring us. You know, the work that we do day to day, they're inspiring us still. So that's really special. And also, you know, my condolences to you and your family on your loss as well. I know those things don't, you know, they don't go away. They don't disappear. But I hope that the work that you do and the work that I do will kind of help carry on their legacies. Thank you. Thank you. So now that we're getting into grief, I know that's tied into mental health and um, and everything, mm-hmm. <laughs> just just everything. Um, how how has the grief and loss of your grandmother besides you starting your businesses? Of course, that's like the 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 pro, like the plus of it, the positive side that everyone, oh, you know, well, she, she took the grief, she took the pain and turned into power to build something of um, your own. But how has that like really affected you behind the scenes? So that's really where my wellness um, journey began. After my grandmother passed away is when I started therapy. Um, I was just grieving really, really, really bad. And I took care of my grandmother while she was on her deathbed. So losing her was just such a major loss. And I started therapy, which started out as grief counseling because mm-hmm. it was I was still crying every day and it was almost a year later. And so my primary physician said, let's just try some grief therapy and see how that works. And so I did, and it was a tremendous help. But then I started realizing that there were some underlying things there that were causing some kind of issues in my life. And so we like uh, forfeited grief therapy and I just started therapy. And there was like all the childhood trauma and issues mm-hmm. started coming up. And then you have to kind of pull back the layers on your life and you have to look at your life from a completely different Ooh. lens. And yeah. that's where the journey began. Because I was like, okay, I'm thinking this whole time, this is all connected to the loss that I had you know, taken with my grandmother. But no, some of these things that stem from childhood and things that I had experienced in, you know, adolescence and when I was a teenager that I had never healed from. And so mm-hmm. they were up in my adult life as being reactive or being explosive or being, you know, shut off from everyone or being um, really recluse and just not wanting to be bothered with anyone. And I never understood the connection to childhood to adulthood. I'm like, oh, that's stuff that happened when I was a child or it wasn't that serious, but Mm. it's relative. It's whatever it means to you. It's however it shows up in your life. So in therapy, they call it big T trauma and little T trauma. And that looks different from person to person. Something we could go through the same experience, but be affected differently. And so that's what you said that. That's what really started me on my healing journey. That's what made me be super intentional about wanting to go back and heal those things and just be um, healthier moving forward. Yes. Um, I'm so glad that you brought up childhood trauma as well, because I feel like when I started going to therapy, it was when my brother passed away about four years ago. Um, But that was pretty much like the icing on the cake. And then once you get the therapy, you get to start to unpack everything. Like, wait a minute. I thought I put this in a compartment. I thought it wasn't bothering me no more. I swept this underneath the rug. I'm good. You know, so like a lot of time um, as women, especially black women, it's even we got to put on a persona of being strong or being super strong. Especially we a mother, just a mother in general. You got to you got to be strong. So it was times where I was grieving and I was hiding it because, you know, I'm a mom. I got to got so much other things going on. If, you know, your kids see you hurting, it's going to affect them even more. Um, and it can affect your relationships in general. When you when you grieve, you're not in the right mindset, um, friendships, partnerships, um, <laughs> business relationships, like mental health. Yeah. affects all areas in your life, whether people want to believe that or not, it really does. So I say that all to say is originally I'm just like, well, I don't know how to process my brother's death. This is the second like major, major, I guess, big death. I mean, my, my grandmother, grandfather and everything passed away too, um, which was 
which I felt, but I feel like I felt my brother and my father on a on a different level. My brother was unexpected. He was still in his 30s. He was still young. Um, so I didn't expect that. That hit me really hard. My father passed away the day after my 15th birthday when I was younger as a as a teenager. So that hit me super hard. It was unexpected because um, he hid how sick he was. But at the same time, I was going through my childhood to my adulthood and just keep picking up bags. I yeah. want to say like Erica Badu, the bag lady song, you just, just carry these bags around. You don't even know how it's affecting you and how it's affecting your relationships, how it's affecting you being able to shine your light and not have it, you know, be dimmed by the things that you're going through where you can really um, be, be your highest version of yourself. For sure. I mean, we carry so much because like you said, we have so much to do and it's like we don't even have the space to even grieve and we don't have the space to say I'm sad today or I'm tired today or whatever the case may be. But that strong black woman persona is dead. Listen, as I've gone through this journey, I want to live a life of softness. I want Ooh, to soft life, soft life me, please. <laughs> Like me, I want to show up authentically. <laughs> authentically does not mean that every day is a good day, right? But showing up authentically means I'm struggling today. So I'm going to take some time to um, regroup. I'm going to rest today. I'm not going to do 15 things today. I'm not going to work on that project today because I need to show up for me today. And mm -hmm. so just knowing those things just makes it so much easier to navigate when we're going through. But when you have this persona up, when you have this veil up, it's hard to separate the two because you are afraid of showing up in your authentic self because also you're afraid to be judged oftentimes. And it's like, yeah. people will look at you like what's going on. But at the end of the day, you have to look out for yourself because like you said, it affects everything, your work, um, your livelihood, your relationships. I mean, the the start of my healing journey was with my grandmother passing away. That's what started the therapy. But I really feel like had I not done that work, I did that work for almost four years, then things that happened after that, I probably would not have been able to manage and navigate as well as I did had I not already been putting in the work. And so that's mm. why it's so important because baby, life is going to life, okay? And life is yeah. out here lifing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> so it's like when these things come up, you you have like one or two choices. I feel like you can either stay the same or you can evolve. And if staying the same is not working, if you're noticing you keep hitting the same brick wall or you keep responding to things the same way, then the alternative is to do the inner work so that you can show up differently in the world. And that's the route that I chose to take. Yeah. I like that you said that. I feel like sometimes like trauma um, and things that we deal with, we kind of like normalize it, at least in our head. We're like, well, you know, this is this is normal. This is all I know is pain. This is all I know is toxic <laughs> toxicity. Like, this is all I know. But in all naturality, I feel like we got to stop normalizing and stuff like that and start start healing, whether it's going to therapy or self-care. My therapist told me, I just remember after I finished the grief portion of my therapy and I was starting to, you know, unpack that childhood stuff, I kept saying, oh, but, you know, other people had it worse or it could have been worse or I know someone who went through X, Y, and Z and I've never gone through that. And my therapist was like, what are you talking about? When did this become a, a comparison game? Why are we talking about traumas? We are talking about what affected you. What affected you matters. And it even if someone did go through something that you feel was bigger or more significant, it does not lessen what you went through. And once I realized that, I was like, it does matter. You know, all the even the little things that we don't think affect us, they do in some shape, form, or fashion. And it's not until we really sit down with those things, we're not going to really move forward in greatness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally right. And I feel like during the pandemic, um, was a perfect opportunity for a lot of people to either start therapy or to start sitting down. I mean, being yeah. on lockdown in the house. What else do we have to do? Nothing but be with yourself. And I think the, you know, the pandemic really helped people like start their healing journey. I know so many people who started therapy. I know so many people who had those hard conversations with their parents, you know, to heal those relationships because we were forced to be still. 
Mm. That's like another thing. We're so busy. You have to sit still. And, you know, life will sit you down if you don't do it yourself. Um, my grandmother always said, if you don't come to Jesus, he'll come to you. And so it's like you have to make room for yourself. You have to be a priority on your list that you have to just take it easy, take some time out and get yourself together. Because if not, life is going to come at you fast and you want to be prepared for it when it does. Because things are going to happen. It, you can't avoid, you know, bad things happening or unfortunate things happening. But how we respond to those things, we're only in control to our response. We can't control mm -hmm. bad things. We can't control negative energy with other people. We can't control anything but ourselves and our response to those things once they happen. Okay, I agree. Now, how has um, like starting your healing journey kind of impact you as an entrepreneur? Listen, first of all, those who are really in the entrepreneurial. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't think they go hand in hand, but Listen, it's not easy on its own right because you you are pouring into your business this is your livelihood this is your bread and butter you this is how you feed your family how you pay your bills mm -hmm. when i tell you when i hit rock bottom and i had to take a break from my businesses from what you know fed my children from what paid my bills i was like all right i have hit my ultimate low like my personal low because i i felt like i've hit some um some personal highs like okay girl you did that you did this but it's not until you hit those lows where you're like okay wait a second what do i need to do to get back up again my life fell completely apart like mm -hmm. in, in pieces and i had to pick up the pieces and what i did differently was that i put my pieces back together differently this time right and so before therapy before going on my healing journey i just want to put my pieces back together the exact same way praying that it works out better the next time something happens not this time. You know, I lost everything because in the course of my healing journey, let's talk about the D word, divorce. Okay. And so you're trying to run a business. You're trying to raise children. I also work a full-time job. I'm in the wellness space. So I'm constantly pouring into people all day, every day. And I thought, I felt like a fraud. You know, I was like, I'm showing up for people in these wellness spaces. I'm encouraging them. Um, you know, telling them to have firm boundaries, um, take time for yourself. And I'm over here drowning. I'm over here depressed, um, filled with anxiety on medication, like suicidal ideations, everything, because my life had completely fallen apart. But I get online every day and I do my job. And it's mm -hmm. like, this, you know, this is a community that has your back. You know, we're here for you. Um, we can help you navigate these hard times. And I was literally dying inside in my personal life. And so my businesses actually suffered when I decided to co come to a complete halt and get myself together internally because I couldn't show up in those spaces authentically because I wasn't doing the work that I needed to do. And so mm -hmm. I'm recording on my podcast and my podcast generates money because I have sponsorships. So that money was done. I didn't record on my podcast for almost a year. Um, my small business that makes the candles and the room sprays and the tote bags and the journals. I took the website off the server so that people couldn't even access my business so that I wouldn't have to be forced to ship any orders out. Um, when I tell you I completely shut down my business aspect to get myself together so that mm -hmm. when I show back up in the business space, I was who I said I was. I was showing up as a healed version of myself. And maybe I'm using heal loosely because I feel like healing is continuous, but I wanted to show up and prove to people that mm -hmm. listen, I, I know you can do it, and I know that because I did it, and I'm constantly doing it. I mean, I'm, I'm in a constant pursuit of healing and wellness. And so, yeah, my business, unfortunately, it suffered. And I know that everyone can't take their business off the server. I know everyone can't start recording on their podcast. I took a lot of L's. You know, mm -hmm. I took a lot of L's. It was some months where I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills if it wasn't for my mentor. I don't know how I would have made it out of those months financially because it, it impacted me significantly. But now that I'm on the other side of it, it was the best thing that I could have ever done. I love that. Um, so are you saying that you took time for you? Yeah. Like to heal? So you stopped everything you was okay. doing. It's like, you know what? I'm broken right now. Yeah. I need to take this time out for myself and really get right within I before see. I go back out here and pour into everybody else's cup. I need to make sure my cup is filled up. That's exactly what I did. I took a year. 
to get myself together, to do the work, to get back into therapy, to journal, to join support groups, to do whatever it was that I needed so that when I showed back up in this space, it was real. You know, because I felt like I, like I said, was a fraud. I felt like I was preaching something that I wasn't doing in my life intentionally. And I didn't want to show up as that person anymore. So, yeah, I took a year to work on my mental health, uh, to work on my wellness. Um, and then I came back and now everything is just taken back off. And that's the thing about when you're true to who you are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I felt like I was going to lose my supporters um, of my podcast, my listeners. I felt like, oh, my God, once I get my business back out there, are people going to buy my products? I've been away for so long. But people like the organic connection that they have to you. Mm, You're man, authentic. That authentic connection. You know, it's organic. I'm sharing my story from a real place. And so many people are going through similar things that they're like, no, I, I needed to hear that. I needed those words. And once I realized that me taking time for myself was not a punishment, but it was like a reward, it made mm -hmm. it worth it. It made it so worth it. I'm glad that you said that because a lot of times people don't really take that time out to really heal. They don't um, listen to their intuition or what what they need um, yeah. to do. A lot of times we just try to rush it to the side or we be like, well, we go to therapy and we'll still do this. Me, on the hand, in the process, I started therapy right in the pandemic probably okay. like the beginning of the first year of the pandemic, but I also quit my job, like right after I started therapy too. So I was like, hey, I'm yeah. Tanae. And next session I was like, hey, I quit my job. She's like, hey, I'm still getting to know you. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of did like everything at one time. Um, and it was just, it was for me, it was just talk therapy, having someone to talk to that I felt like didn't know me, mm -hmm. um, was non-judgmental okay. and that could give me professional advice, not just your homegirl, not yeah. just your cousin, your sister, whatever, but um, somebody that's um, really professional that I could relate to. Um, and it was a new experience, but it was also good, but I did everything at one time and it was, it was nuts. It was oh. really nuts, but it was just like I I just felt like called that I wanted to change. I wanted to change the trajectory of my life. I felt like I just woke up. <laughs> like I just like sat with myself. I was like, you know what? Went back through my childhood. Like, how did I get to this point where I'm just okay with just um working a job, living paycheck to paycheck, just doing what I feel like I was conditioned to think I have to do because I had I had one son I had at 18, so I had my son very young. But at the same time, I went through a lot of trauma, which kind of which kind of subconsciously caused me to dim my light <laughs> growing up. Just to give everyone who's tuning in just a little bit of background about me. I don't do this very often, but I was always the nerd, always voted most likely to be successful, valedictorian, <laughs> top of my class. Um getting scholarships in middle school like i was on fire i was on fire then i became a single mom and i was still dealing with other trauma and then i picked up more trauma and i'm just carrying trauma around but still doing okay from the outside looking at you like oh you know still looks well put together but i'm feeling unfulfilled i'm yeah. feeling unfulfilled so i got tired of feeling unfulfilled and i was like listen this is not my fullest potential Right. I'm so much, I'm capable of doing so much more than just working for corporate. I mean, that's, that's cool, but it just wasn't for me just thinking about how everything was like before the trauma and how I was before dealing with trauma. I'm just like, this is not for me. And I was just like, I'm starting therapy. I'm quitting my job. I'm starting my business. Um, I'm just going to walk by faith and not by sight. I understand it. You know, I have a very similar story. I had my oldest daughter when I was 18. You know, I have a child in college and people be like, wait, you have a child in college? I do. I have a child in college. I had, I got um, pregnant with her at 18. So I understand your story. By 23, I had two kids and was married. And so when I look at the like my life overall, I was with my ex-husband for 18 years. And so for that to come to an end when that's all I had known my entire adult life, that's traumatizing. Mm -hmm. I had never been on my own, like ever. It was always he and I. We had always done this thing together. And then you wake up one day and you're almost 40 and you out here in the world by yourself. And it's like, 
what am I even supposed to do? I've never done this before. And so when I tell you hit rock bottom, mm. uh, hit rock bottom, you know, I lost everything. I had to start completely over. And I think what people don't understand about divorce is it's not just the severing of the marriage or the severing of the relationship or the family. You lose so much more in divorce, right? Because I had to give up my home and I had to move with my children and also the friendships that were connected to the marriage, mm-hmm. you know, so like they had to pick a side and it was like, why can't we all just still be friends? And it's kind of hard for people to navigate that. So I lost, you know, my tribe and my circle and I was literally out here feeling like I was alone. And so that was like the rock bottom that I hit, but had it not been for the therapy and the work that I was doing leading up to that point, I don't know if I would have navigated it the way that I did because I, I, even though I lost so much and I feel like some of it was like completely uncalled for, like I didn't even deserve like some of what happened in that process because divorce is ugly. I'm going to tell you, you can get married in five minutes and divorce will carry you through the ringer, okay? Like the court has to do with your assets and things, but that aside, every person you lose isn't necessarily a, a loss. And so once I realized that things were happening for me that had never happened before after I left that marriage, after I left that relationship, I was just like, wait, because sometimes people will weigh us down. And like you said, you were dimming your light. Listen, I did the same thing. I was always in the background so that he could have the spotlight, so that he could excel in his career, so that he could be great and show up in the world. And I'm just back here with all these talents and gifts that God had given me, not doing anything with them. You know, because of fear that I was going to overstep or my light was going to be brighter. And now it's like my light is going to shine. When I walk into the room, you're going to feel my light. You're going to feel my energy. You're going to hear my story. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to walk through whatever it is you're going through because I know what it feels to literally have no one to depend on when you're going through the hardest time in your life. And so when it came to the business side of it, that's why wellness is so important to me in business because I can be out here with a successful business all I want, but what does my personal life look like? What does my home life look like? And so I want both of those components to be healthy, not just having a, a, a successful business, but I want my personal life to be successful. I want my personal life to be healthy. And then I realized that they go hand in hand. I have to do the work business-wise. I have to read. I have to learn new things. I have to connect and network with people for my business to be successful. But I also have to make sure that I'm taking care of myself on the personal side as well. Yeah. Yeah. Which is super, 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 super important. So thank you so much for sharing that. I know that was really transparent. And just to let you guys know, if you're tuning in right now, I literally came across Candace just scrolling through Instagram and I saw a post that was really transparent. Um, I want to say it was, it, it kind of touched that Like, this is the issues that I have shown in public, but this is what I've been dealing with in private, right? And I was like, wow, this is this is really brave. It takes a certain type of um, courage to really go on social media. A lot of times we like to just show the highlights, the good part of our life. Like, hey, this is me living it up. This is me on vacation. Look at my business is seating. Look at my podcast popping up. But we don't really get into, like, the struggles what we had to overcome to get to that point or what we're going through right now, um, currently behind closed doors. Like everything is not always peaches and cream. And a lot of times people look up to people on social media and they just buy into what they see. And if someone is only posting positive stuff, then that's, that's what their audience is going to get. Um, I do love how, you said that you 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 share your transparency because it can relate to someone else what they're going through and have a big impact. Um, I do the same thing as well. <laughs> so don't call yourself a fraud because I know that I feel like Helen is continuous, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said yeah. so. I'm still I'm still trying to get to where I'm supposed to be as far as you know being successful and just certain levels and goals that I feel like I had to reach personally, mentally, um, financially, business-wise, all that good stuff. But still on social media, motivating others because I feel like, why wait until I get there? Why wait until I get to the top? Why, why the journey is just as impactful as, as, as oh. that level? <laughs> 
it really is. The journey, I think, is probably more impactful than just showing up on the other side of it and telling your story. And so um, when I hopped on the Omniwar's business page to just kind of do a transparency post, and that page has like 50,000 followers, that was so, I was like shaking. I'm like, okay, because I haven't, I've put my story out there, but like on my platforms, which are much smaller. So to put it on a platform of that scale, it took a lot of courage. And the thing about it is, it set so many people free. The amount of DMs that I received, the amount of like emails that I received, or people in the comments saying, I needed to hear that I'm going through the same thing, or my sister is going through the same thing, or thank you for your transparency. I've been wanting to start therapy, but I was afraid, or I didn't know where to start. That post was really impactful, not just for me, but for everyone that came across it. And it was just, it was really a simple post, but it was super impactful. And if you don't mind me reading it, it said, I survived a lot privately this year. And for that, God, I'm grateful. And, you know, I just went into my private struggles and I went into my um, public struggles and just letting people know, like, people are going through things, right? And we show up and we look good and we look polished and we look like we have it all together. And you never know what someone is going through behind closed doors. And so on my journey, I also want to just encourage others. I don't want to just keep this to myself. You know, I don't want to keep this information to myself. I don't want to keep the process to myself, but I want to help others along the journey as well. Because like I said, you know, healing is continuous. We never fully arrive because it's always going to be something to recover from. There's always going to be something to bounce back from, but you can also help others in the process of helping yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, really strong. Um, I know you kind of skipped over the the public and the private part of the post. <laughs> Talk about it. Um, let me see. I'm not going to read the entire caption, but then we can kind of break it down. What the caption was was like, um, in my efforts to be transparent, mm. this past year wasn't easy. I survived a lot, some publicly and some privately. I survived a divorce that was more toxic than the marriage. I survived COVID, another significant health issue, starting completely over with nothing, becoming a single parent, and the list goes on. These were my public struggles, but in private, I was dealing with depression, anxiety, suicidal ideations, and mental health challenges. There were days when giving up seemed easier than going on. I'm grateful to still be here. The beautiful thing about community is where you are deficient, they have surplus. Where you lack, they offer their overflow. And so this was the business that I work for. So the Omniwar community is not just a place for women of color to read memes, although we love a good meme. It is a source of wellness. Our tribe consists of medical doctors, licensed therapists, wellness practitioners, lawyers, you name it. This community loves deep. We hold space. We walk alongside you and not behind you. This community changed my life. And so I posted this on Sunday as a way for us to just reflect on the things that we're grateful for. And the post just exploded. Yes. And so um, a little background about that. Well, like I said, when I was at my rock bottom, I literally called my mentor because it was hard to still be here. And that's just, that is or, as organic and as honest as I can possibly be. And I called my mentor and I was like, I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. I, I'm just, I don't even know what to do because I, I've never felt like this before. And she hopped on the phone with one of her good friends that was a therapist. And she's actually a really popular therapist in Atlanta. And I was on a Zoom call with them in five minutes. And, you know, mm -hmm. and they talked me off the ledge literally and figuratively. And they helped me to be like, no, sis, your work isn't done. You still have so much to do. You're viable. You know, you have people that love you. We need you to stay here so that you can carry those things out. And that's what community is. That's what having a tribe is. That's what sisterhood is, is not allowing a person to go through something on their own, but showing up and holding space for them when they can't hold mm -hmm. space for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I think just the idea of my life completely falling apart, you know, an 18 year marriage, two children, it was just, it was rough. Because, you know, when the marriage ends, your finances change, you go from a two parent, a two um, income household to a one income household. I was navigating so many things in the height of that. I became really ill. I had to have major surgery. Um, I was out of work for like four months. It was just so many things going on. And I was like, I don't even know how to bounce back from this or how to recover from that. And I had to go back into my toolbox. And that's why therapy is so helpful because therapy gives you the tools to navigate. 
Therapy gives you the insight to know that you can survive anything. You may survive it with scars, but scars are proof that you survived. And so mm -hmm. I look back on my life and I have scars from childhood and I have scars from adulthood. But all that signifies is that I survived what it was that I went through. And so I'm I'm living proof that you can survive your hardest days. Like I promise you that you can because I'm here to tell my story. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm I'm very thankful that you're still here. Um, I know sometimes a lot of well, a lot of people could be dealing with thoughts of depression, anxiety, even suicidal ideation. That's not usually some, something that people feel comfortable sharing. So I, I just want to thank you again for coming on this show and being this real, being I, this transparent. I said we're going to have a conversation. Okay, we're going to talk the talk tonight because it's going to free people. It's going to help people. So, yeah, sure. I'm honored to be here. A lot of times people ignore their mental health or um, we wear masks. We get so used to wearing masks that um, it's, it feels more comfortable not to share, you know, mm -hmm. these type of deep, intimate thoughts with others. But you just never know who is on the ledge right now, who's close to the ledge. Um, and it, it could be people that, you know, look like me and you, we look well put together. Um, and there's a lot of people that wear masks, you know, hair, makeup, we, we got it going on. You would never think that um, sometimes we struggle behind the scenes. Um, our struggles may be different, but, right. you know, a, str a struggle is a struggle. And it, it's a part of life. Like you it said, life be life. Look, life got some hands, okay? <laughs> life got <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, I definitely want to ask you, um, why do you feel like wellness and the business space is so important? Because I know that was um, our topic for tonight. Mm -hmm. Wellness in the business space is important because you can't. OK, listen, there is plenty of successful businesses out here. Right. Like I don't own this huge, you know, multi-million dollar corporation. I wish I did, but I don't. I want a small Speaking business. Into existence. <laughs> right. I'm not giving up on that dream. Right. <laughs> but I just feel like wellness in the business space is important for so many reasons, because when I was doing all of those things, and I was dying inside, my businesses were good, like they were flourishing, but it was just like, well, what does that do for me though? Yeah, I have, you know, some money in the bank or I have this, that or what, I'm making these connections, I'm being invited to be um, speaking at events and things like that, I'm showing up in these spaces, but is my business really successful if I'm not doing well? You know, and so that's when I was like, no, from now on, my business is going to incorporate wellness, whatever that looks like. If I need to take time away, I take time away. If I need to jump on a call, you know, with other people who help me with my business for us to figure out ways to navigate or make the business flow smoother or, um, you know, create different systems. It's all about making things softer, not just in my personal life, but also in my business life. And in order for it to do that, it has to be a cohesive balance of being well in my private life and in my business um, space as well. Yeah. Thank you um, for sharing that. Um, I want to ask you, what advice could you give to anyone listening right now on how to navigate those mental health struggles while still operating in greatness? Listen, I, I was telling anybody, just start, right? I think oftentimes we know that we're struggling with certain things. So we've been, you know, dealing with them for so long. Like you said, they've become our norm. Um, trauma should never be a normal feeling for you. Um, you know, depression should never be the way that you are just going to be, or you've gotten comfortable being in that mindset or being in that mood or being in that frame of mind. No, you deserve happiness. You deserve joy. You deserve to be uh, whole and to be full. I would encourage you to start with therapy. I think it's the first step to really breaking open the pieces of you that need to be healed. Um, uh, talk therapy is a great component. I went into a more um, detailed therapy, but I guess that depends on whatever it is that you're going through. Your therapist will be able to tell you what would be the best type of therapy for you because there's so many different types. But if you just start with talk therapy, I think that that will kind of get you to where you need to go. Just sitting down to talk to someone, like you said, that's not going to judge you, that's unbiased, that can give you a professional opinion, a medical opinion, a clinical opinion about what you're going through 
it's the start. I recommend therapy every day of my life. I'm like a walking advocate for therapy. Um, it changed my life. It saved my life. Uh, I put my kids in therapy after mm. I got divorced because I'm like, that was a huge change for them as well. And I want to make sure that I'm raising emotionally sound children. So to therapy, we all went, you know, it's a family because it matters. Our emotional wellness has to be just as important as our physical appearance, right? I go get right. my hair done. You know, I go get my nails done, my feet done. <laughs> what am I doing for my mind? What am I doing for my emotional health? No, that's what the, that's where the therapy comes in. Also, yoga, meditation. I'm a big component for journaling. If y'all if y'all could see, same, same. Just behind me. I don't know if you can see it, but under this bookcase, mm -hmm. so many journals that I just feel, and I have a grateful journal that I write in every Sunday. It could be the smallest little thing. I was grateful that I got home from work today with no traffic. That's something to be grateful for. It doesn't have to be this big thing all the time, but write out your thoughts. You know, put them on paper. I feel like that changes the game when you when your pen strokes a piece of paper. It makes it real. So journal your thoughts, yoga, meditation. You can find yoga on YouTube. YouTube yoga for beginners, and they can give you chair yoga or floor yoga for beginners. But just doing something that contributes to your wellness is the start. You just you have to start somewhere. Right. Um, I like that you brought up journaling. I also um, journal and I also have like a routine I do with my son every night. We, we play a board game and then uh, he writes in his gratitude journal. I write in my journal just so we can both make sure we're staying grounded and mm -hmm. not taking the small things in life for granted. Because, um, you know, children tend to do that sometimes too, <laughs> especially uh, this generation. <laughs> Different, right? I'm like, my kids are nothing like I was. It's different. Right. Out here. The thing about a grateful journal is this, right? So what's today? October 12th? Okay, so if I was having a hard day today, I'll get a, a journal from last year and I flip in my grateful journal to October 12th of last year and read all the things that I was grateful for. And it just kind of helps put things in perspective like, wow, I was really tripping. Look at how much I have to be grateful for. Look at everything, you know, that's happening in my life. And sometimes you just need a reality check yeah. you know, because life will knock you off balance and you'll just kind of be like trying to get your footing and you just need something to, like you said, to keep you grounded and to bring you back in. And that's why a grateful journal is so important. I keep that separate from my other journal. Like my grateful journal is just that. I write what I'm grateful for in that journal. And my other journal gets everything else. It gets the overflow of my feelings and my emotions and my thoughts. But there's nothing like being able to flip back a few months ago or several weeks ago, a few years ago, and to read your entries in that journal. And it just makes you be like, okay, all right, I, let me let me regroup. Let me get myself together because I have so much to be grateful for. Mm. Yeah. yeah, um, I love that. And I feel like sometimes I don't have a journal that go back. This is kind of like a new thing for me, but I love that. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like for me, when I want to go back, um, it's like even my Facebook memories or old stuff I wrote on social media. I'm like, dang, I can't believe I used to think like that. Like, I'm so glad that I was able to transition my mindset or get out of victim mentality and start taking my power back. I'm like, woo. But I, I can only imagine like how um, effective that is to have, you know, journaling for that long period of time. Like, that's really awesome. So, guys, if you just tuning in right now, what we are going over is wellness in the business space. Um, making sure you take care of your mental health as an entrepreneur. I know a lot of times we tend to neglect that, but they go hand in hand. Mental health is wealth, guys. So. Please just make sure you're taking in this conversation. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. If you're catching the replay, um, even better because you can fast forward, rewind, do all that good stuff. Now, if you if you don't have a therapist right now, waiting on a therapist, don't feel like you need therapy. Some of the things that you can do is journaling, like Candace said. You can also do meditation, yoga, exercise. Um, you can listen to motivational podcasts um, and different like motivational content. I know one thing for me, like before, I, even before I started going to talk therapy, what I did was change what I was listening to, change what I was watching. I went from watching Love and Hip Hop, Ranted TV, the like, ah, this is so. Funny, like, <laughs> to really like, okay, no, 
what you what you what you trying to do you try to build this business you need to be listening to content that's going to be helping you grow in the, in those areas in that direction i feel like sometimes we can get so caught up in reality tv or just just into that that whole atmosphere that's not helping you grow that's not doing anything for you if anything that's like feeding negative energy because that's that's all it is it's entertainment mixed with negative energy that's so, awesome. It's the most negative entertainment. <laughs> I have not watched reality TV in years. You know, it's, been about, it's been a while for me, too. <laughs> it doesn't resonate with who I am, how right. I grow, the music I listen to. I changed all I changed my diet. I was just like, okay, if I'm really mm -hmm. going to do thing, then I have to be intentional about everything that I'm digesting, not just the television, not just the music, not just that, but I changed what I eat, y'all. I, I went like, I'm all in. So I changed my diet. Um, my daughter be like, Mom, you heard that new song about Future? I'm like, I'm not listening to Future <laughs> by myself. I cannot do it. He is the, he is like the, the capital T in Toxic. I can't do it. But <laughs> listening to, and, may, and not making it bigger than what it is, right? I think sometimes when we mention things like meditation, or yoga or journaling, people think it's like this grand thing. Meditation doesn't have to be sitting for 30 minutes and quiet. It could just be you starting out with 60 seconds of stillness. And mm -hmm. you are sitting there allowing your thoughts to be clear, allowing yourself to regroup, to just have a clearer mindset, to have a clearer head going forward. And then you can build yourself up to a few minutes and then maybe 15 minutes to 30 minutes. But start where you are. You know, I always tell people, don't try to jump all the way to the end of the process, but you have to start where you are. And that's okay if you can only sit in stillness for 60 seconds. At least you did it. At least you started it. You'll be able to, you know, build the bandwidth to sit longer. But yeah, start where you are. Yeah. And I saw a comment about speaking with your healthcare professional about it. Yeah, let's say um, the one says, encourage them to talk with a mental health care provider or with their primary care provider that if they would feel more comfortable and that's what, that's what i did i went to my primary care physician and she recommended um the therapist that i went to for years and so that's exactly what i did i didn't know what else to do and so i went to my um to my pcp and she set me up with my therapist like she literally made the phone call for me and she said i have a patient that really needs your help i have a patient that i feel i could benefit from your services i'm sending her to your office right now and i left my pcp and i went straight there and I got locked in with her. We were a great match. And also, don't be discouraged if you're not a match with your therapist, right? Sometimes you may have to go through more than one therapist until you find someone that really connects with you mm -hmm. to be effective in your healing as well. So therapists matter too. You can't just, you know, yeah. just, you know therapists are the first one that you are recommended. But um, just having one that's effective is, is really important. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, I didn't go through my PCP. I know a lot of people do, and that is a quick a quick route, especially to get a referral and to get someone at your insurance take. I was listening to, I don't know if I was listening to The Breakfast Club when they were talking about mental health. I was listening to some podcast, and someone came on there. I think the the person that put together blackgirlsneedtherapy.com okay. and I, they um, match you with a black therapist. You just put your zip code in. So I knew when I started therapy, I'm like, I want somebody that I feel like I can relate to. Not saying that I can't relate to someone of another race, but I just felt like, okay, the way I listened to the podcast, I, she resonated with me. I'm like, let me go to see what this website is about. I put my zip code in and I kind of vetted it, went through the websites and stuff. And the first one that I got in with, um, it was a match. It was a match. Somebody I could uh, be on there, you know, shed a few tears sometime, but also laugh and kind of joke, like kind of feel regular. Don't feel like, okay, I have to go into a session. I literally did virtual um, from the comfort of my own home and was able to to really get a lot out of it. Yeah, really? and think about it is, and my I also matched, you know, with a, a, a black female therapist, and she just happened to work the one that my PCP referred me to. But the thing about therapy is, it doesn't work if you don't work, right? You mm. going to therapy is one part of the journey. You still have to do your part to continue that journey on. So you still have to put in the work. Therapy is just a, a part of the journey. It's not the entire journey. So it won't work unless you do. And also, you have to tell your therapist the truth. 
you know, you have to go Thank in. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to get at that next. But try to on and try to, you know, go in there like we have it all together. Why are you here? You are here <laughs> because you're having these issues. You're here because you need to learn, how, you know, tools to navigate things. So be honest with your therapist because if not, you're wasting your time. You're wasting their time. And mm -hmm. you're not, you know, getting any better. You're not on your healing journey, which you're saying the same. You're just going to talk to somebody, paying a co-payment, and nothing's changing. So, yeah, be honest and be transparent. It will free you. I promise you it will set you free. Right. And I've had um, people that I recommended to go to therapy or just listening to other people um, tell their experience. And when they say therapy is not working, it's either okay. Um, is it the therapist is not a good match or the other thing is so when you where you keep your real in therapy, are you like, no, you ain't you ain't want to tell your therapist all that? Okay, yeah. that's what they did for us. <laughs> Girl, but I can't help you the way that this person can. I appreciate you sharing with me. You know, I'm gonna keep the matters of your heart right here. But I can't help you say it's not the way in which this person can. So, yeah, go be honest. That's the whole point of this journey. We have to literally sit with ourselves and be like, I don't want to show up in the world as this person anymore. But right. I have the highest and healthiest version of myself. And you're not going to meet the mark every day. This is not about perfection, right? But this is just about striving for greatness in your personal life, whatever that looks like to you. What I consider greatness in my life is different than what you consider to be great in your life. But as long as we're showing up authentically, that's what matters. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. Now, do you feel like as a black woman, you had to conceal like your mental health struggles? Or in the past, do you feel like you had to conceal your mental health struggles to kind of put on that facade of, yeah. I guess, that projective of being strong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely felt like that. My marriage fell apart on a Sunday night. I went to work Monday morning. It was just like, I got to go to work. I can't. We got things to do. <laughs> you know, I was supposed to work on that project when I got to work tomorrow. Never mind that just four hours ago, my entire life changed and my marriage fell apart. I literally got up, I showered, and I went to work. And I said to myself, what, what are you doing? Why are you even here? I couldn't think about anything all day, but the fact that my marriage is ending, I couldn't think about anything all day, but my children, what was coming next. But I'm at work though. And people are coming to my office and I'm smiling and I got to smile on, Hey, how you doing? Okay. You need me to do what? And I'm working on stuff and I'm dead inside. And I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm, I'm tired of the front. I'm tired of like, you know, uh, the facade that we put on. I don't want to do that. And so I, I did. I felt like I couldn't be vulnerable. I felt like I couldn't even have a moment of weakness. I felt like I couldn't even take a moment to process the fact that my marriage was ending because I was so committed to my commitments. And it was like, no, I have to be committed to myself as well. Like I matter just as much as my work matters. I matter just as much as my business matters. I matter just as much as this thing that I promised this person that I will work on. But guess what? I'm not going to be here to work on anything if I don't take time out for myself. So, yeah, I definitely I did the whole front. I did not share with anybody what was going on. You know, I didn't share publicly that we were even separating until about eight months in. It was like and also like feeling defeated or even uh, kind of ashamed that it happened to you because you don't get married with the intention to get divorced. But it's, listen, someone told me on that post on Sunday, she was like, congratulations. And I was like, no one has ever said that to me since I've gone you know, through this process. And she was just like, yeah, like I'm congratulating you for navigating that. I'm congratulating you for getting through what you got through. You're on the other side of it. And look, you're here encouraging us. And she was like, you deserve a congratulations. And I was like, thank you. You know, we just look at the loss and we look at the heaviness of it. But sometimes we have to look at the blessing that's wrapped up in that thing. I promise you there's always something good to come out of something bad all the time. Sometimes it just takes a while to see it or to get to it. But there's always something good inside of a, a bad experience or um, unfortunate event. Yeah, I feel like that's um, part of the healing process, too, because it comes to a point where you're just tired of being like, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. um, so I know I feel like when I started really posting motivational content, that was one of my things. Like, stop thinking things are happening to you, but it's happening for you. For you. 
so easy to get um, trapped inside a victim mentality. Yeah. Let's let's not do that. Um, let's take control of, of our life. Let's turn pain into power. Because mm -hmm. if not, you just sit around and you just keep that mentality forever. And then before you know it, your life has passed by and you let that kind of shape you. You let that shape your future. You let that shape um, your potential for, for doing more, being yeah. more. That's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to grow through what you're going through, right? Don't just go through it, but grow through it. So yeah, that's that's the key right there. Yeah. I think we cover it. We cover so, so much. Um, so anyone that's tuning in right now, I know we we usually talk about getting to the big, leveraging social media, um, things that we can do to do uh, build multiple streams of income. But it's super, super important this episode to really take that time out for your mental health. Um, if this has triggered something, maybe awaken or anything, but Monday was mental health awareness day. And I feel like sometimes we just, we sweep, we sweep mental health underneath the rug. We, we all like money. We all like money. We all like building our business. And I'm going to tell you something. The bag is going to come. I promise you, if you do your internal work, you're going to get a bigger bag than you ever got. You know, mm -hmm. when Yes. <laughs> these are going to be flooding through i can't even make this up i have more opportunities now i have more ways of getting to the bag now than i ever had before showing up authentic sharing your story with people it will help your business thrive i promise you because people mm -hmm. are going to resonate with you people are going to connect with who you really are and not who you are appearing to be so don't be afraid of your story don't be afraid to take some time to do the eternal work. I promise the bag is going to follow that journey. Once you start that healing journey, the bag is connected to your journey. So don't ever think you're at a loss. No, you're not. You're going to get a bigger bag than you ever got before. Just stay true to who you are. Stay true to your audience, to your supporters, You know, to the people that believe in you who support your business. As long as you show up authentically with them, you always gonna get a bag. I promise you. So, and this is for somebody who hit rock bottom and lost everything and had to start over, like get it back out the mud and start over. And when I tell you it's possible, and did it within like almost like uh, this January, we coming up on like two years, and I'm living in a better like mindset emotionally than I was before. I have everything of my own now. When I tell you I lost everything and didn't know how I was gonna get any of it back. Mm -hmm. The healing journey will help you get your bag. I promise you. So, yeah. you know, in business, getting to the bag is important. We have bills, we have responsibilities, but making sure that you're good so that you can get the bag, that's equally important. So, yeah, that's my advice Um, because that's what I, how I did it. You know, there's multiple ways to get your money. There's multiple ways to bring your business to be more seen. But none of it matters if you're not taking care of you. Make yourself, if you're the face of your business, and you need to make sure you're good. You need to make sure that you're Let's good. talk about it. Let's talk about it because money is not everything. Not I feel like the reason um, why I started my healing journey at the same time, around the same time as my entrepreneur journey, because I didn't want to just get to the big. I wanted to make sure that I was right within. I know that sometimes people can get so caught up into money and money can be the root of all evil. It's millionaires, it's billionaires out here that have all the money in the world and still not happy. Okay. Um, every day rich people who commit suicide you know we see yeah. it every day money will not heal you you know money may make your life a little bit easier in certain aspects but it won't heal you i want to get to the bag i want to get to my joy i want to get to my peace i want to get to my happiness i want to get to all of those things i don't want to just have one thing because having a bag is not enough if i'm over here depressed and struggling but i want to be happy with a bag i want to have joy <laughs> with that bag you know i want to be able to go on vacation and actually enjoy the vacation. And so all of it works together. It's like one big system that's waiting for us to do the work. And once you do the work, I promise you, opportunities are going to open up for you. Yeah, especially how mental health really affects your relationships. Think about it. When you're running a business, you're either more than likely dealing with clients, you're dealing with customers, you're dealing with people um, interacting with others on some type of level, whether it's just networking or something. But those relationships can be greatly impacted if you're not right within. Like it's, it's people that stop their own big. Let's talk about your big stopping. <laughs> 
because you won't do the work that you need to do. So you fumbling money that you could have had. And then yeah. I promise you, if 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 all it works together, it all works together. I lost everything, y'all. I shut my businesses down for a year and got it all back. So I mm-hmm. promise you that it's possible if you do your work, everything else is gonna follow to your business, to your family life, everything is going to just be healthier because you set the tone. Yes, yes. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for being transparent um, and for giving people the real. So if you tune in right now for social media, this might be something different that you've seen on your timeline or your news feed or that you came across, but it's a much needed discussion. It's yeah. a much needed discussion, guys. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, thank you for allowing the space for me to share my story. And I just hope that you know, it, it touches the person that needs to touch. If that's only one person, then it makes it all worth it. Yes. All I need is one. <laughs> but thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you're catching a replay, um, I also have the Facebook group, Real Talk Business and Motivation. So I'm really big on community. Just like Candace said, if you feel in like you don't have like-minded people around you, please at least use social media for networking. Let's not just scroll the shave room or see what the latest gossip is. Let's mm-hmm. make sure we're networking, especially if we're entrepreneurs. You don't yeah. have to have those people around you. You sure don't. You find your own circle, but Real Talk Business Motivation, a Facebook group, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Gotta go. Bye. Bye.